Um, organization culture, in my opinion, is really something that is determined by uh, the top leadership of a company. Uh, and uh, what, what really tends to happen is that uh, uh, different types of uh, companies evolve different cultures uh, based on what the leadership at, at, at any point in time is. Uh, for example, in my life, I worked in uh, several companies uh, which were really large uh, uh, and mostly multinational. And there, uh, I would I have seen uh, faces in uh, in the way the culture in those organizations is, uh, have evolved over time. And uh, in uh, when I reflect on what I saw in those organizations, uh, there would be times when uh, the organization's culture would actually shift dramatically free from being for example, flexible, adaptive, uh, experimentative, and innovative to rigid, uh, somewhat uh, less entrepreneurial, and uh, uh, stuck uh, without being uh, without driving innovation at all. For example, and when you really think back on what really changed in those uh, times of uh, flux, if you will, is that there would have been a leadership change. Either the CEO of the company would have uh, moved on uh, and replaced by someone else, or the entire top management would have changed um, with some key new people coming in to drive a new culture. Uh, so as a leader, the important thing, and if you are in, in a position where uh, you can drive the formation of culture, I think there are two or three things that you need to consciously be aware of and do. One, you need to have a very strong HR sort of process built in right from the word go, which firstly determines what organization culture uh, currently prevailing in your organization is. And secondly, do you have a sense of what that new organization culture uh, that you want developed in the organization is and articulated clearly enough in a vision statement uh, either in the form of operating principles or in terms of leadership principles so that it leaves uh, no ambiguity in terms of what you want the organization to be like. Uh, a great example was one of the large uh, sort of uh, multinational network companies that I worked in where the leader at that time actually wrote out what are called leadership principles uh, and then had, disseminate, had those leadership principles disseminated in the organization um, and those leadership uh, principles were really around how the employees needed to act with their clients, what they needed to do amongst themselves when working together, being collaborative, for example. Uh, it was also about the fact that they would always respect um, diversity. Uh, that they would, you know, in some sense, openly communicate with each other, etc. So once you define those tenets of operating principles or leadership principles, then it becomes easy for the large organization, for people in the organization to understand what the culture is and uh, then try and align themselves to those behaviors which exhibit those culture. Because ultimately what the culture is, is really a sum total of the acceptable behaviors that are encouraged by the leadership and therefore it gets embedded as the standard operating principle or the standard operating behaviors in the in the organization um, in, uh, in 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 terms of my own personal uh, style uh, i like organizations to be built around teams uh, i do not uh, really like the idea of uh, uh, you know um, uh, isolationist or individualistic uh, uh, sort of approaches to uh, to, to uh, uh, building organization culture. What I mean by that is that I think organizations succeed when there is genuine uh, collaboration between the various uh, functions, uh, when people really help each other to succeed rather than look at each other as competing for, uh, uh, you know, for proving one up with chip or uh, things like that. Uh, the uh, uh, the reward system has to encourage these kind of behaviors, in my opinion, um, and only then that organization culture then uh, you know can get embedded. So these are some broad thoughts that I 
uh, that for me are important in the way uh, an organization's culture is, uh, is uh, uh, evolved. I also think that organization culture to some extent uh, will be determined by the stage or the life stage uh, of the organization itself. For example, in a startup, uh, it is important to be really entrepreneurial, uh, really uh, um, innovative, uh, flexible, uh, and um, almost adaptive in, in the way an organization's culture is built. And the reason I say that is that because a large part of your business activity in a startup is really around discovering what will work uh, and being, uh, you know, almost uh, not having anything rigid around the way the organization functions, because those are important traits for the startup to succeed, then the culture has to be des designed around uh, such principles, which means that people have to be really flexible, that you cannot have too many boundaries, uh, people have to be able to roll up, uh, um, uh, people have to roll up their sleeves and be in a position to, uh, uh, um, to uh, uh, you know, get their hands dirty. Uh, they have to be entrepreneurial and willing to experiment, for example. So these are some of the things that I would think are important in a uh, startup. On the other hand, if an organization is scaled and becomes steady state, uh, uh, then the kind of behaviors that you may want to encourage are going to be slightly different. You want to have somewhat uh, of an organized sort of uh, um, uh, culture where people respect boundaries, people collaborate, but uh, do not experiment too much, for example, and uh, they're happy with maintaining the status quo. Um, in, in a startup, you need to have a culture which where people do not have, uh, you know, while work-life balance is always important in a startup, you cannot afford to say that work-life balance is more important than uh, the amount of work that you need to get done. Uh, so you need to be flexible on those sorts of things. Um, I, I would think that these are some of the tenets uh, that I have valued. Uh, and uh, if you are flexible uh, and if you are open to listening to your people, then culture can also be something that you adapt uh, over a period of time. And uh, I think a good leader listens to people about what's working and what's not in their culture. And that's another thing that I would think is important from ensuring that your culture is always evolving and changing uh, and, uh, 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 and a place where ultimately people can thrive. Uh, these are some of the uh, you know, top of mind thoughts that I have about building organization culture. As a leader, you have to uh, know that the buck stops with you. So you have to take active interest in determining what the culture should be and then disseminating that uh, and articulating that uh, desirable culture in ways that are unambiguous so that people can really follow those behaviors, respect those uh, practices, and then try to adapt themselves to fitting in with, the, with that culture. Uh, last but not the least, if people don't fit into your cultural uh, sort of boundary sets, then it's better not to encourage those behaviors and therefore you have to sometimes be ruthless about making sure that people who don't fit into your culture leave the organization. Um, I think uh, that's about uh, what I had to say uh, about culture. Thank you. Thank you.